Howdy y'all. While dad's working on the fuel pumps, I'm gonna work on these hour meters over here. And I say these hour meters because ideally I'd like to just use this one off of 4G. I'm gonna see if I can get it apart and this is the one off of 7J. It's a newer style. Now, I would definitely like to get this open and clean the inside of there and see exactly how many hours 4G has. My first inclination was just to tack weld some pins on here and slide hammer it out. But Dad says you can tap it with a punch and twist it. <laughs> Dad gave up. I'm going to try it my way. I'm going to take this on the wire wheel and clean it off, and I'm just gonna tack weld a couple of pins on there that I can slide hammer. This is something I've cobbled up and used a million times for a million different things, but I'm gonna weld this bolt on the end of that cap, and hopefully, in theory, yank that cap off with my slide hammer. I didn't get carried away, because I don't wanna damage this, and I haven't yet, so. We'll get this in the vise. I'll get my slide hammer out and we'll try it. Oh, look at that. Worked like a charm. Two wax and it's out? Yep. Oh, this kind of concerns me. That does not look good in there. And you can see where the water has been sitting in there. I'm a little bit worried about this one. I might have to use the guts out of the one from 7J. Some of you might be asking, well, you just ruined the plug, but I didn't. This is kind of a standard technique that a lot of body folks use to pull dents out. So I'll just cut that bolt out and I can grind that off. You'll never even notice that it was welded. <laughs> coat of paint nobody will be the wiser. I think I need to take out this other side too so I'll do the same thing over here. Before I go welding on the other side I'm gonna see if I can pull this out of here and maybe that'll help us. Oh pretty easy. Last time I used three tack welds I'm gonna see if I can get away with two. This is a smaller plug also. <laughs> Once again, no harm, no foul. You're probably as curious as I am what it looks like inside there, and folks, it don't look good. It is pretty gummed up inside there. So, I think I gotta try and see if I can knock that out of there. It's very gummed up. Looks like I might be able to get a punch inside there and stay right outside of this gear and maybe punch this out off the housing in there. I'm going to give that a try. This poor old thing definitely got some water in it. And it is froze up. And there's really nothing else that should be holding it because all the internals that come in through here, they're out of the way. They're out of there. So it should, in theory, just slide right out the other side, but I am not seeing it. There is a kind of a keyway in there. So let me look a little further. Yep, she's coming out now. It was really stuck in there. Looking through that glass, it's full of just particles and stuff. I don't know that there's gonna be much saving any of this in here. Might just have to swap it out with the one over there off of uh, 7U. At least I got it out. That's a good thing. Decided to take it outside because there's so much stuff in there. I think dirt and debris really looks terrible inside of here. We may never know what the hours are on 4G here. Right yes, there? Yeah, now tap it out. Will it go? Yep. It's just full of gunk. That thing might be oh, toast. It's, it's dilapidated. 
It's just got a lot of dirt in there, that's for sure. Dirt and water. 461 are the last digits here. Okay. 461. I think... Oh, it's a 6. That's kind of what I thought. 645... S Six, six, four, six, one. Six, four, six, one. So four, four G's hours showing six thousand four hundred and sixty-one hours. I don't think I'm going to waste any more time on this one for now. You can see right here. It looks like probably some dirt got in there and wedged it, and it's bent. So I don't think that this one's going to be worth messing with right now. I think we're going to be better off. To take this one apart from 7J and just use the internals out of that in 4G's casting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that worked. See, the seal was leaking. This one's got oil in it. This one's in perfectly good shape. I think I'm going to use this one off of 7J as well. The one off of 4G right here you can see has a little bit of corrosion and there's a wear mark that my fingernail catches with a seal ride. Good thing is this thing is well oiled and it looks like it's working. Before I clean this thing up, I'm going to pop that seal out of there. I've got a new one right there and to do that, I might be able to get in through here. Might have to just yank it out with my puller too. This thing never works. I think I've used it on every seal imaginable. I've never gotten one out with it. This this time it worked. So if you want something to work, you gotta bad mouth it. Oh, now I just need to get this thing cleaned up. And uh I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with the glass up here yet. I've thought about Popping it out. It, it's in pretty bad shape. And if I can get that popped out of there, I'll polish it up. Don't want to wreck the seal though. Try and pry this bezel out of here very carefully because you can't see anything through that glass and it's going to be worthless if you can't. So I really do need to get it out and clean it and fix it. So how that exactly works. But. Hoping we can save it. Yep, it is. It's a lead collar. So I can save that, definitely. I see they got kind of an O-ring or a cork, which I can make one of those. It's very thin. Now that glass should pop out, ideally. Oh, there we go. Now I can clean that up. And this thing, I damaged it with the wire brush so I can straighten that up. It's kind of a brass guard that aligns where to look. I'm going to punch this out of here because as I was fiddling with this, the spring right here came out. And I want to fix that. I want this to work. We're going to we'll probably silicone a piece of cork on here or something to seal this thing up. So I'm gonna get this in the vise and see if I can punch that pin out right there. Where did that go? That's not good. Well, I got the spring out and the pin's somewhere over there on the floor. I gotta get down and look for it now. There it is. So everything's all apart now. Now I can clean it all up and probably put it back together. I might end up taking this apart. I don't know. I'd like to reset it to zero. Just taking a razor blade and gently scraping off the rust and stuff that's stuck to this glass. Oh, there it goes. Yep, I'm back to 7J parts. I'm gonna see if I can punch this one out of here and salvage that spring. Almost out. Alright, and I saved the spring. It 
might be hard to see, but this spring, because it's got a, a tail on this side and a hook on that side, but there's a little gap right there that we should be able to punch that, or at least press that spring out. Keep that tail in that little groove right there. There we go. So, we've decided to take this apart and zero it. And we'll do it just once. But uh, I need a special screwdriver to get those little nuts out of there. So, let's make a tool. Right there, there's a little nut that's got a pin in the middle of it that's threaded. So, I looked for an old screwdriver. And I found this one that the blade is going to be perfectly the right distance. And I'm going to need to cut a notch out right in the middle of the blade to clear that pin. And I'm thinking the width of maybe one of those Dremel cutoff wheels. We'll start with that. I've made something similar to this before for a obsolete, well, something else. Oh, that's pretty close. I need to widen that other side just a touch. Actually, it might work. I think we're good. I'm a little hesitant to take too much out. Got a small pin there that I need to punch out so I can get that gear out and this is going to be very tedious and there is marks that indicate that somebody has attempted to get in this before or been in this before so we do know it works and I can barely see that I need my glasses I'm in the house today because well I brought all this stuff in because we were expecting a gigantic blizzard and it turns out that we didn't get anything 40 miles west of here, they got 18 inches, so we got maybe an inch and a half. I am having substantial trouble trying to get that pin to budge from that gear, and I'm, of course, being very careful with it. I might have to think of another route. I'm going to see if there is a way I could get these other screws out of here, even if I have to put this in a vise and kind of tap them around with a punch, because I cannot get my screwdriver that I made it's directly on those with this gear in the way. I'm just tapping this lightly. I'm trying not to mess up this brass little nut right here and turning it to the point I think I can get my screwdriver on it partially and get it out. This is going to work. It's going to be tedious and I'm going to do the remainder of it off camera. I've gotten two of those nuts out. I've got this one loose over here. I've found that if I get them kind of to this stage I can usually get my screwdriver in here and finish the job. Oh, this, this is one part I want to... Okay, so those gears are dog-eared into this, and it looks like this can only go one direction because it's offset. Oh, I see. They're kind of run on a bit of an eccentric and this goes here, like that. Then the eccentric gears, like so. I see a small washer right there. There's one right there. And the other one already fell off. It's right there. Then this bronze spacer, and then there's one down here, that'll come off too, come on, I'll clean all this stuff up, three, now this, okay, that's geared, so that'll go on, and the spring's pushing things out here, the spring in the bottom. But it looks like we 
we got this guy next with two gears that are eccentrics that run on it. So I'm going to put it right here. See if I can get those two gears out. And those were like this. Three more spacers. Right there. Then this. And these are all offset, so they can only really go one direction. That goes right there. Which goes right here. And our dials. Which I may not take all this out of here. I don't think I need to. So, I can see an improvement in the beauty of this design. You don't really have to recapture those shims or springs down here in the bottom. Once you get this far, you can just push it all back together. And I might do that. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and pull these out. Nothing looks damaged. These little gears look fine. And we're going to set this up to zero, which should be right there, 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 and there. Everything's at zero, and what I want to do is put it back in this housing, and you can see right there there's an index mark right here in the bottom that is going to coincide with this index mark here and that way I can be sure that I have these dials lined up exactly at zero where I want them before I go any further putting this back together. Now that I've got everything where I want it we can put it back together. There's two little dog ears right here on this and they will dog ear into this first dial right here. Next we've got this one and I'm putting a little coating of light coating of oil in here in between everything just to kind of get that there. Next are these eccentric gears here and there's two of them stacked on here just like that. They are going to go on here, like so. And we'll want to take our screwdriver and make sure that all of those get seated correctly. Before I get too carried away, I'm going to put a little drop of oil right there on those gears. Put a little bit on this shaft here. Next, we'll put back our short spacers. There's three of those. Two, three. The other spacer bracket goes next. Right there. What I thought was two gears is actually one with a groove in the middle. And I'll put a light drop of oil on there for these gears to write on. Just noticed it's hard to see on this. Camera doesn't pick that stuff up very well. But you can see there's room for two gears there. So the smaller gear has to go towards the dial side. There's definitely a difference in the two right there. Make sure it's good and clean. Next, I'm going to put these spacers back on here. You know, before I do that, I'm going to put a little drop of oil on all these. Those were kind of gritty and came out hard. I've sort of cleaned some of this stuff up, but that'll help it if I need to get into this in the future, and it'll help it preserve it. So, and this this whole thing on 7J at least the 4G one was a mess, but the 7J hour meter was 
in very good shape, just like most things. And it was full of oil. The seal had went out, so. Got our little washers to go on next, right here. Those are little bitty things. Usually they can stick to your finger. You got enough oil on your finger. Put those on. I'll put this back on next. And I want to get my gear somewhat lined up with these dog ears right here on the end of the hour meter. I think that'll just save me some trouble. And let's screw that around till those posts line up and be careful not to damage the threads. And you're not quite going together. So I suspect I might have something in the middle there. Not quite the way I want it. Finally figured out the problem that was absolutely driving me nuts. So I kept putting this together. It was bound up. It would turn, but it was tight. And it turns out that there's a tiny spring, the one that was in the back here. And one of those coils from that spring slipped down and got under this last dial. And when I would snug up these nuts up here, it would make it tight and it wouldn't work freely but now we're doing good if you listen close it clicks you can hear it click like a watch it works smooth it feels smooth everything's working like it should be i have the numbers where i want them and the other thing that was binding me up is i had one of these on one of the thicker parts you can see there's a thin part uh, I don't know what you call these cogs uh, in a thick part here and I, I it somehow got in there sideways and it kind of bound things up but we have everything working nicely now so I'm very confident that this is going to be a good hour meter and this is going to work for 4G now that this is working I'm going to go ahead and set it to the side and we're going to finish up the glass make a new one of those I got the glass cleaned up. I'm going to use a little steel wool to kind of polish it up. I'm going to take a little steel wool to this too, just to shine it up. It's just a light brass piece. Five six six two SKF. This crossed over from the Caterpillar one in the parts book. So I'm going to install it this way. Oil is going to be coming from this direction, so we're wanting to keep it out of the hour meter. So it's going to install right here. I think they're about flush. Look at that. Reinstall our end cap here. Up next is going to be our glass here. First our brass plate, our glass, the homemade gasket, lead seal here. The heart of it, we're going to put the, the gauge in. I need to dog ear this with that right there. Now I can put my cap back on here. I gotta get this little spring back around the lid here and get this pin drove through there. Here's the tricky part. So that one tail dog ears in right back there. And then we need to wind this clear around like so, and start that punch through there. 
so it's going to rest against this housing right here. With the help of my wife, we managed to get that thing started in there, and I got my punch in there. So now I'm going to punch this pin in from this way, and hopefully be done with this. Okay, one more step. A few drops of oil on this seal right here. Oil on this worm gear right here and this here. Put some on this taper. So we're kind of going backwards into this seal. There we go. And voila! One rebuilt service meter. I do want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. These are usually what Harbor Freight screwdrivers are good for.